We had two bills this year, SB uh, 5012 and HB 1552 for industrial hemp. We suggested the most minimal possible regulations that we could suggest in order to maintain the integrity of an, of an industrial hemp crop with the sophisticated markets that exist today and to be compliant with the new Legitimacy of Industrial Hemp Research Act that was passed on a federal level in February of 2014. However, our minimal regulations were too minimal for the Washington State Department of Agriculture who have inserted themselves into the regulatory process and requested multiple amendments to our minimal regulations that they then projected with a fiscal note of $900,000 in order to administer an industrial hemp program here agriculturally for our state. It will cost nowhere near $900,000 for them to administer a reasonable, compliant industrial hemp program in our state. But they wanted their hands in the testing of hemp. They wanted their hands in the testing of, 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 uh, of the hemp in certain labs. The reality is that the Liquor Control Board does not oversee marijuana testing. The marijuana producers take their own test sample. They bring it to a third party authorized testing facility and there are labs set all through our state. And everything is done by third party authorized folks and with producers who take their own sample. The WSDA, the Washington State Department of Agriculture, insisted that they had to be present to see an industrial hemp sample collected. Now I want you to know in Canada they've had legal industrial hemp since 1998. It's a booming industry. We buy 90% of the industrial hemp seeds and hemp seed oil and other derivatives that come from the proteins of the hemp plant from Canada. Health Canada, which governs the industrial hemp program um, in that country, does not oversee the testing. They do not go out into the fields and collect tests. In fact, it's actually a revenue generator. They authorize professional agrologists to become licensed field samplers, and the farmer pays a, a couple of hundred dollars, in many cases less, to have a third party come out and take their test once a year, collect a sample of plants, and then take it to a third party testing facility. And Health Canada doesn't deal with that. They don't bear the expense of that. They don't supply the human resources and the mass spectrometers and the gas chromatographs required for all of that testing. That's hundreds of thousands of dollars. The Liquor Control Board doesn't do it either here. And here we're talking about marijuana, not even a non-drug oil seed and fiber crop. But the Washington State Department of Agriculture decided, nope, we need to see the test, the, the sample actually being collected. We need to test that sample ourselves and invest in hundreds of thousands of dollars of cannabis testing equipment. And therefore, it's gonna cost almost a million dollars, which is far too much for an industrial hemp crop that we don't think is going to earn any money. So right now, even though we have two lots bills even alive still in our special session. They are both stalled at the House Appropriations Committee level and the Washington Hemp Industries Association is working overtime providing economic data and other evidence to prove to them that their projection of regulation is far, far more expensive than it needs to be, why it is, and how much money there is to be made with industrial hemp. So, we would really appreciate it if you folks would join, and all you need to do is go to joinhemp.net to become a supporting member of the Washington Hemp Industries Association. It's only $50 a year to become a supporting member. We have got to clean up carbon, carbon emissions here. We have got to clean up heavy pesticide use, heavy water use, heavy fertilizer use. We are ruining the land. We are ruining the soil. We have already all but destroyed the American farm and the farming industry. Industrial hemp will re-energize that and will also bring health not only to our lands and our soils and our waters, but to our biosphere, to our climate. I also am very uh, honored to sit on the board for the Center for the Study of Cannabis and Social Policy as well as the Normal Women of Washington. And I am involved with compliance and law. I've had a dual career over the last 20 years or so in complex civil litigation and compliance. And I wanted to make sure folks realize that in this SB 5052 that has passed, that has stripped away many of the rights that patients have been enjoying in the state of Washington since the voters spoke overwhelmingly in 1998 to, to uh, legalize the medical use of marijuana, 
It used to be that folks that held medical marijuana authorization patients who depend on this safe whole plant medicine to manage a variety of medical conditions and quality of life issues, everything from glaucoma to multiple sclerosis to wasting syndrome to chronic pain syndrome to a variety of terminal illnesses. They used to be able to grow 15 plants themselves, those who had to, those who could. Now, if they voluntarily register, which many folks do view as a HIPAA or a privacy right violation that we would need to register for our, med our medicine, put our names on a list, those folks will be able to grow six plants now, not 15. And if you don't volunteer to be on the registry, you'll only be able to grow four plants as a patient instead of six. Now the reason for 15 is of course for those of you who depend on this safe whole plant medicine to, for your conditions or for your quality of life, oftentimes 15 plants are required to produce the actual quantity of medicine that would be needed to manage a health condition. Most folks who have a serious illness don't consume by smoking marijuana. They consume it by eating it or ingesting it. Requires more plant material. Collectives used to be able to have 10 members. They'll go down to four members now that this law has been passed. Additionally, We've been able to go to these medical marijuana clinics to get our medical marijuana authorizations, those who have qualifying conditions. Medical marijuana clinics as we know them will be dissolved by law in two and a half months, July 23rd of 2015. That's this year, that's this summer. All medical marijuana clinics as we know them will be dissolved by law and guess who is left to authorize your use of marijuana for medicine? your primary care provider. I'd like you to ask yourself how likely is your primary care provider to issue you an authorization for medical marijuana. This is actually a place where activists and patients and people who believe in the freedom of this plant need to work with their clinics, need to work with their medical providers, need to work with their primary care providers to tell them not only is the huge need here and to give them information and hard data that they need easily found on multiple websites across the, the World Wide Web, also let them know there is money to be made. You are going to have to work on that. We have to work on the economic aspects of industrial hemp all the time. We have to dangle the carrot of money in order to get people to buy into it. It's also how we're ending the drug war with money, proving that these billions of dollars have done nothing but let the black market flourish while we have continued drug uh, addiction, amazing statistics of drug addiction and crime superseding most other parts of the world right here in the United States. The last thing I want to tell you is that medical marijuana dispensaries as we know them will be dissolved by law unless we can get some sensible legislation or initiative passed by July of 2016. So next summer, right now, eligible existing medical marijuana dispensaries are being asked now to apply for a medical endorsement, not from the Department of Health, from the Liquor Control Board. A medical endorsement from the Liquor Control Board and those that actually make it through the gauntlet of compliance issues, which will no doubt move and each compliance target will change as the process goes on, they will then be allowed to be rolled into existing recreational marijuana stores. We don't have a ton of those. Many patients, tens of thousands of patients across our state are impoverished, disabled, they live in rural areas, they need safe and legal access to this whole plant medicine that they have come to rely upon, that doesn't have side effects effects, that does improve their quality of life, that does treat their condition. So we need to act, be vigilant, we need to work with our primary care providers, we need to contact our legislators, you guys don't, don't let anybody fool you, we live in an amazing country and an even more amazing state. And, and our legislators on a state and a federal level, they work for us and most of them are fully aware of that and they want to hear from you and it's so easy to do. So please take the empowerment given to us by the folks who created our country, by the folks who drafted the Constitution for the state of Washington and for the United States, and let's use our voices, use our phones, and start being brave and letting our light shine. Thank you everyone for showing up today.